Yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, my proposal paper for part of my PhD thesis. Yeah, the topic is about public-private partnerships in a multi-level governance setting, a study of Indonesian PB program in the water sector. As a consequence of the growing of the populations, the demand of water supply has also significantly increased and exceeds the availability of the water supply. Uh, according to United Nations, there are 6.6 .6 billion people have access to the water resource, but 1.8 billion people have access to the water system that is still contaminated. And around 633 million people have no access to the appropriate water resource. However, uh, it seems that uh, it's not well supported by the public investments, uh, although it's become the target of MDGs or SDGs. Uh, as I mentioned, the Van Ginnikan study that uh, in Africa, the, the public investments only able to fill 60% of the total of the needs, whereas it's dominant by the uh, donor fund. If we look at deeper into the government budgets in Africa, uh, according to Van Ginnikan, it's only able to fulfill around 2%. Therefore, uh, one possible solution or alternative solution is to fill the gap between the demand and the fundings is to turn to the private sector participations through a public-private partnership or PPP scheme. And according to Jensen, recently there are more than 110 countries that already have uh, adopted PPP as their uh, procurement method for infrastructure delivery in the water sector. These widespread adoptions of PPP have produced different PPP forms. And according to Alfen, the forms are highly influenced by their own values, their legal systems, and political situations. Uh, therefore, for certain countries with uh, decentralized system government administrations, developing insights into intergovernmental relations uh, is necessary for uh, supporting or for providing successfully managing PPP programs. My, the aim of my study is to explore, to extend the observations of the uh, PPP relationship to include not only public and private relationship, but also intergovernmental relations within the PPP arrangements. Uh, we choose Indonesia as our case study in Indonesian PPP water sector because for several reasons, as can be seen in the, uh, sorry, yeah, as can be seen from the, 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 the table, uh, until 2013, Indonesia governments only able to provide 12% of their budget for infrastructure. If we look at deeper into the water infrastructures, the government's only able to afford, until 2014, only able to afford 44%. That's why uh, Indonesians cannot achieve the target of MDGs. So this is a big uh, uh, problem. Not, I, I think it's not only for Indonesia, but other for, for other countries as well. Then secondly, Indonesia is also a very decentralized country. Since the big bang of decentralization in 2001, uh, the, there are high significant increase uh, in terms of administrative regions. Look at from the figures, uh, in 2001 there are 30, uh, 379 uh, provincial and local levels. And in 2013 it increased to 539 regions, uh, both provincials and local governments. And all subnational governments have great authority in service delivery, including in the water sector. However, it's not supported with the uh, resource. As can be seen for, is in this figure, even in Java and Bali with the, the central of economic uh, in Indonesia, the local revenue is only able to uh, cover 18% uh, from the total. So they are still depend on the gov central government transfers. <laughs> Moreover, Indonesia also has PPP programs. And as can be seen from this uh, figure, uh, in Indonesian PPP program, we have uh, inter-ministerial agencies that coordinate the PPP home, and then we have in its ministries, we also have a, a role in PPP arrangements. And water governance also the same. It's relevant with the finding from OECD surveys in OECD countries that water governance is fragmented into several 
uh, agency in central and also in local governments. And this is the water resource management that local government play an important role in the water management. And from Indonesian cases, that we can highlight uh, two more important things that despite PPP appearing as a tool for filling the gap in uh, infestations, uh, in fiscal dealing with fiscal limitations, but Indonesian cases also provide insight into how the PPP arrangements have been influenced by the structures of government. So it's clarified the finding from Alfen. And then related to the governance mechanisms, if the PPP program involves many uh, government bodies across governmental levels, thus the process of decision making surrounding PPP is seen as a crucial part that may be influential in shaping the process development of PPP in this area. Our literature review suggests that in developing countries, the literature focus on the performance instrument, the organizing choice and institutional arrangement. And in developing country cases, focus on the development of the program and the political influence. And from the comparisons, we, we can assume that in developed or developing countries, the role of local governments is important in water service delivery. However, we found gaps in the current literature. First of all, the current PP studies uh, have neglected the whole policy making and have not investigated the role of public actors in each governmental level. Strong legal framework is very important, but how to develop strong legal framework? That's the big question. And then the current approach that emphasizes the technical aspect like economics uh, approach generally ignore the processual aspect of PPP development. And the approach that explores the governance aspect of PPP seems to only focus on the horizontal relationship between public and private actors. The highly complex and dynamic characteristic of decision making involving several levels of government are largely looks. Therefore, I propose a multi-level governance theory uh, to develop to understand how PPP can work in uh, multi-level governance settings. This is the, the frameworks we adopted from uh, multi-level governance theory. And there are three elements that, uh, different, uh, that uh, clarify this uh, framework. First, uh, based on multi-level governance theory, that decision making is not monopolized by the central governments. It's shared to the lower jurisdictions. Therefore, uh, in this part, the first element, we need to uh, highlight the involvement of several governmental actors in mobilizing their political support in their respective jurisdictions. And also, we need to explicitly consider the motive and the rationals of the actors in adopting PPP in the water sector because their motive and uh, relation, uh, their rationals will shape the policy outcome. Uh, and then the second element is decision making. In the decision making, we need to uh, highlight also the role of each governmental level in developing legal framework, how they bring their capacity, and then how they bring their capacity to provide support, the government support or government funding for uh, PPP project in the water sector, and how they minimize the transaction costs that appear from uh, many jurisdictions in uh, water governance. And it can be seen in the risk allocation strategies that was adopted by the governments. And then the, 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 the final element is about PPP structurings. In this element, we need to draw our attention to the form of national local relationship. What is the mechanism? To, make, to ensure the coherence between central government and a local government policy. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, in addressing my research uh, aim and research questions, uh, we need at least uh, three things that, to understand the development of PPP in a multi-level governance setting. First, we need to know, we need to understand who does what in the framework of PPP. And then we need to make a clear mapping from the uh, policy, policy stage of the development of PPP policy. And then the secondly, we have to understand also the gaps or the challenge that may be made uh, appears in the process of the development of PPP policy and in the implementations. And the third one is uh, we need to also to uh, highlights the relevant instruments to, to, to adopt or to, to, to tackle the, the problems that uh, emerge in the development of PP in a multi-level governance setting. Uh, uh, this is my research design. Currently, uh, I will use mixed method. 
the first phase I will do the quantitative and then the second phase I will do the qualitative to uh, an embed case studies. We select three cases, case studies in Indonesia. The Tangerang district has already successfully implemented PPP. Okay, thank you so much. And one second. And East Java and Bandar Lampung, we just finished the, the bidding. So after eight years process, we just able to finish the bidding in East Java province in Bandar Lampung. Thank you so much. Uh, Okay, we've got time for a couple of questions. Uh, yep. Um, thanks very much for that presentation. I think it's really interesting to try and map the different institutional actors, which I think is, is crucial for trying to understand what's happening. I've just got a thought. Uh, I saw some very interesting work recently uh, applying a slightly different approach to analyzing how the Federal Reserve uh, makes decisions mm -hmm. using something called the it was social something matrix. Basically what it did is it tried, rather than looking at the roles, it tried to look at the institutional rules or the, or the, the, the thinking or the decision making rules that different types of actors have and mapped them out as to how they applied in different situations and then looked at tensions between them. So rather than thinking about uh, something that might be optimal, which I'm not sure if that really means much, um, actually instead try and look at the different sort of ways of thinking, the different rules, different actors are using, what their interests are, how they analyze the problem, mm. and how those interact. And I think you might have a better understanding for that way of how the PP pr pr process works and how the outcomes happen. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the very valuable input. Uh, but uh, related to the optimum, uh, what I mean with the mo optimum, most optimum and least optimum is based on the case studies in Indonesia. We have three case studies that one case study is already successfully implemented and two cases that they already are successful in the bidding process after eight years process. So from the successful experience, uh, I will show like this is the optimum arrangement and whereas for the process that's not yet successful or, or just uh, uh, have a financial close and after eight years uh, I think that there are so many problems that makes uh, multi-level governance to not work uh, optimum in these circumstances. Can I just come back on? Yes. I think I think you'll probably find in most circumstances like this that different people will have very different views yeah. as to the success or otherwise yeah. of these sorts of happening because all sorts of different players yeah. have different interests, okay. different outcomes, different okay. effects. So yeah. having a concept of optimum seems very difficult. Okay. As, uh, I mean, obviously, it's in some theoretical frameworks yeah. it's used, but I'm not sure if it's appropriate for this circumstance. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to leave it there, so thanks for that.